Hey guys, I am so excited for today's video. I finally found the perfect time to sit down and film this video about the Sonia G Pro face set. Uh, thank you for being so patient. I know you guys have been, you know, really requesting this and uh, wanting the 411 from me on this set. It is currently being sold exclusively through Beautylish. It is out of stock at the moment. I was texting with Sonia and she's hoping to get them back in stock in about a month or so. These are all handcrafted in Japan, so they take a while. Let's go ahead and talk about this set. The set includes five brushes. And at the moment, they're only available as the set. Well, at least when it comes back into stock, um, they've only been available as a set. I know Sonia and Beautylish are planning on offering these brushes individually. I don't have individual prices for these brushes just yet. So just like her Pro Eye set, these handles are tapered. As you can see, they get a little bit thinner at the end, which is different from her fundamental set or the brushes that belong to her fundamental line and you'll see that those remain fairly thick. We're gonna talk about each brush and then I'm gonna demo each brush individually. And then what I'm gonna to do towards the end of this video is compare these brushes with brushes that are kind of similar in my collection. And I'll talk about the pros and cons to each and why I like ones over the other a little bit more, a little bit less. So I've been playing with these brushes quite a bit since I got them. I probably got them about two weeks ago at this point. I've played around with all of them pretty extensively and I've washed them with like soap and water twice now. The quality of the brushes, exactly what we expect from Sonia G. I feel like the brushes have really kept their shape very, very nicely. The brushes also bloomed a little bit from when I got them, which is really nice, especially when it comes to this cheek brush. We'll get to this one, but it's absolutely beautiful. And in terms of shedding, I wanna say from the Inochike and the cheek brush, I saw a little bit of shedding after the first wash. After the second wash, I think I got one more bristle out of the cheek pro, but that's it. I haven't seen any shedding from either of these brushes or the fan brush. So let's go ahead and hop into each brush individually. I'm gonna talk about each one and demo each one as we go along. So I wanna start with the Fan Pro brush. And the reason why I want to start with this one is because it is made out of undyed goat hair, which means it is like liquid and cream friendly. So when I think of a fan brush, I think of, you know, highlight or anything where you want sort of a delicate light application. And then when I see undyed hair, I think of cream and liquid products. So I thought what I would do is go ahead and apply some cream highlight with this brush. And I just purchased this RMS Luminizer X Quad. This is the one that has four different highlighters in there. And I was reading Sonia's uh, Instagram account and she mentions in one of her posts about this brush that it would be great for kind of tackier highlighters that are in pans um, or stick highlighters. And immediately I thought of this one, not that this is especially tacky, but there's a bit of tack there. And all I'm doing is just kind of sweeping the brush ever so lightly, just the tips of it into the pan and I make sure I get kind of the side of the bristles there because when it comes to fan brushes I usually work them this way if you're someone that does this obviously you just kind of want to get the tips of the bristles in but I tend to use my fan brushes uh, a little bit more on the flat side so I'm going to make sure that I get uh, product on the flatter side and then I'm going to oh I should mention so I have primer down I have a brightening serum down I also have foundation down and I have concealer down so that is what is on my face uh, but let's go ahead and apply this highlight and you know I don't know it's I think it's just me but when it comes to a fan brush generally when I'm using it with powder I kind of go back and forth I buff it in but when I've been using this with cream products, I usually just use it in one direction. I don't know why. <laughs> it just seems to feel a little bit better because of the tackiness and the creaminess, but I just sweep it in one direction. I feel like if I go back and forth, I don't know. It just, it feels like it's kind of goop up the brushes a little bit too much. That could just be in my um, head, but I just like using this brush with cream products in one direction and I feel like it just swipes it on really beautifully. And what I like about this brush, what I like about most Sonia G brushes is that it makes the application for the makeup very, very effortless. If I were to have used this uh, without this tool, I would have used my fingers. I would have tapped it on and then I would have had to tap, 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 like 
for a while to kind of just blend it all in, make sure the edges were diffused, make sure there weren't any, you know, actually tap, tap, tap marks. But this brush takes all of that away with just like a few strokes. And there I have just a really lovely application of that cream highlight. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. I will also do the same and bring some down my nose. And then I do like highlighting this part of my forehead. I don't know why. Um, and it really makes it easy to do that because I can just do this and then over my brows, over each brow. And again, makes the application really, really easily. Makes the application very, very even, diffused, light enough, but it definitely lays down the product. This is a really great tool to use for cream products. And I know it's uh, probably, at least for me, it wasn't something that I ever thought of. Again, I always think of fan brushes and I always think of powder products, but I really like that this tool has that versatility because obviously you can also use this with powders as well. So next I wanna go ahead and set my makeup and I've been using two brushes to do this. So the Face Pro brush I like to use all over my face and then the Inochige Pro brush I like to use around my eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one first. This brush is made out of dyed Sokoho goat hair. It's incredibly, incredibly soft. It's fairly dense, fairly dense. So it's gonna pick up a lot of powder and I'm not one that over powders my face. So I have to be a little bit careful when I dip this brush into my powder. I have to make sure I knock off a lot of the excess. But, and I'll show you the good news because this brush is fairly dense. If you do put a lot of powder down, it wipes it away pretty easily as well. I just picked up a little bit there. I'm gonna go ahead and pat that on. And sometimes when I apply powder to my under eye, if I have a concealer that I feel like moves a little bit too easily, maybe it's very emollient, it's not very tacky at all, it's a little bit more serum-y, and I'm afraid I'm gonna move it with this brush, what I do like to do, and I think this shape is perfect for this, what I do like to do with powder sometimes is I'll make sure that I get it all around the tip of the brush. Again, knock off any excess. This brush definitely picks up a lot. And I like to just kind of get that point right underneath my eye and then roll it. And that way I feel like I'm applying a nice layer of the powder, but I'm not really moving anything underneath. Like a lot of Sony G brushes, this is another wonderfully versatile brush. Because of the shape, I feel like it's great for blush. It's great for powder, obviously. I think if you like a precise kind of contour, it's really great for that. The bristles come to a really, really nice point. The name of this brush, Inochige, as I understand it, means basically kind of like the soul of the brush. And it's something that the Japanese craftsmen really believe in, that the, the brush has a soul. And I think when they start making a brush, when they start kind of creating the brush shape. They'll lay down a few of the hairs, a few of the bristles, and they'll work around that. And I think that is what is kind of referred to as the Inochige. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Sonia, if you're watching, please correct me if I'm wrong. And I think that's such a wonderful, wonderful name for this brush because it comes to this beautiful point. You can almost see the bristles that the craftsman probably started with in the beginning. And the versatility of this brush is just amazing. And this isn't a brush that I would use like in a buffing motion because it does come to this point. I would definitely kind of lay it at an angle. I would take advantage of all the bristles here and sweep product on. Of course, if you want a little bit more of a precise application, I mean, this is still a pretty big brush, so you're not going to get something super precise. But if you want something a little bit more precise, maybe for highlight, you can just dip the tip of it in and you can just kind of brush very gently without pressing too hard, but brush with uh, just the tip of the bristles. But I want to go ahead and jump to the Face Pro brush. This brush speaks to me, this one speaks to me as well, because of the mix of the dyed and the undyed goat hair. I feel like it reminds me of my own hair and I just love it. It's like a salt and pepper brush. Anyway, this brush is so, so amazing. I love that it's angled. I've really gotten into more angled brushes. I feel like you get a lot more surface area that way. And when it comes to angled brushes, it's, you know, it's very directional. So it's not something you would use to buff necessarily. Of course you could if you wanted to, but I like using these brushes and, and following the angle of it. And so it makes for a directional application, which, tends to be a little bit more 
concentrated, but because this brush is so fluffy, you get an application that is very intentional, but it's not that strong. So it's just perfect for bronzer and contour. But I've also been loving this for uh, setting powder because it's so, <laughs> it's just so soft. And I just love using this to, um, you know, press some of the powder into my skin and then wiping away any of the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this brush into the Clay de Peau powder. And because this has both dyed and undyed goat hairs, it is not recommended to use this with liquid or cream products, just so you know. So I'm just pressing that in and then sweeping away any of the excess. I don't know if it's the shape of this brush because it's uh, fairly pinched here. So it has like a flat kind of paddle action to it that I feel like it really makes like sweeping away setting powder just really fast and really easy. I feel like with rounder brushes, like with this La Mer, I feel like, I don't know, that because I'm doing more of like a rounded motion, it just takes me longer. I don't know, that could just be my crazy head. But I really like this. It really just begs to be like swept over your face. And I just love that. It really makes for fast work. All right, so next up I'm gonna use uh, this brush with some bronzer. And I specifically chose this Sisley uh, Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder because it has uh, such an interesting formula and I love this bronzer, but I've heard from a lot of people that they find it very difficult to use. It's hard to pick up the product, uh, they're telling me, and it doesn't show up on their skin. And I don't have that issue. I will use either the Tom Ford bronzer brush or what I have found to be the most successful is Sonia G's Sculpt One brush, which is that gigantic fan brush. So while I was playing around with these brushes, I thought it'd be interesting to use this brush with this bronzer and see how well it picks up a product like this. And I had great success with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dip this brush in. I just sweep it across. You can see I pick up plenty of product there, probably a little bit too much. And with angle brushes, I probably stating the obvious, but you want the shorter side uh, in the direction that you're going in. So this shorter side is like first to go, basically, when I am brushing this. So and I'm just going to brush. Look at that beautiful diffused application. Isn't that just stunning? I'll talk about this a little bit more when I do my brush comparisons, but this brush is is really nice. If you feel like the Tom Ford bronzer brush is a little bit too big and fluffy, like I know some people feel like they have a hard time just kind of getting the product where they want. And then some people find the Sonia G Sculpt One brush to be a little bit too strong. This is like kind of right in between all of that because you get a little bit more of a purposeful application with this versus the Tom Ford bronzer brush, but it's not quite as strong as the Sculpt One. So there is the bronzer using the Face Pro brush. I'm in love with this brush. This one is absolutely amazing. Um, I should mention here, the mix of the undyed and the dyed goat hairs, there really is like a functional purpose for that. I think it looks really beautiful. Like I mentioned, it reminds me of my own hair. I call these the salt and pepper brushes now. But in terms of purpose, uh, dyed goat hair, versus undyed goat hair. Dyed goat hair kind of grabs, it's a little bit stickier. It grabs more product than undyed goat hair. So sometimes when it's just undyed or just dyed, it's too much of one and not enough of the other. But because this is such a fluffy brush, you wanna make sure the application is light and diffused. And I think adding both bristles into this kind of brush is just genius, it's absolute perfection. So next let's move on to blush. And for this, I'm gonna take out the Cheek Pro brush. I love this brush. It's really hard for me to decide, not that I have to, but it's really hard for me to decide like which brush of mine is my favorite in this collection. This was probably what I was most excited for. Again, I'll, I'll show you uh, comparisons after we do the demo, but this brush pretty much just kind of falls in between two of my favorite blush brushes. It's sort of like if those two brushes had a baby, this is what would come out. I love this brush. It's like the perfect blush brush for me. I love blush brushes that are domed. I love them when the bristles are a little bit shorter. I don't like when they're too long. I don't have enough uh, control. And with blush, 
I want to have a controlled application. I don't want to have a whole like side of my face situation with blush. The bristles are very, very soft and it, this it's just perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm using my Chanel Golden Sun blush, the only one I've been using lately. With just a few taps, I get a nice amount of product with a brush this shape where I feel like it's domed and it splays out at the top, but yet it's still pinched. I can use this uh, directionally. I can use this um, on its side and kind of do something a little bit more precise. I don't generally feel comfortable with pinched um, brushes, pinched ferrule brushes to buff, but I feel comfortable um, buffing with this brush because of the shape of the top, because it's so domed. I just think it's so beautiful. I don't get a blush application like this with any other brush that I've used. It's soft, but it's there, it's diffused, it's, oh, it's just beautiful. So that is the Cheek Pro brush. Whew, I absolutely adore this. Next we have highlighter, and I don't generally use such a small brush for highlighter, but I have been playing around with this in terms of highlight, and I really like it. So this is the Detail Pro. Again, this is another salt and pepper brush. It has both dyed and undyed goat hairs. So it's like a, a gigantic eye brush or a very small face brush. I love how it's kind of in between, and there really aren't a lot of brushes this size. So I think this is probably the brush that has given people the most pause, but really you can use this wherever you want. You can use this to kind of lay down powder over your eyes or just if you're putting one color all over your eyelid, this is great for that. I'm gonna show you using this with highlighter. You can use this very easily to contour if you do that sort of thing. I don't really contour that often, but I love how this is a really like unprecise brush for your eyes. You can use this to blend or it's a very precise brush for your face. So I've really just been using this as highlight. And again, this is definitely a much more detailed brush for highlight than what I'm used to, but it has definitely grown on me. So when I've been using this brush to highlight, because it is such a small brush or detailed brush for, I think for highlight, I've been using highlights that are a little bit toned down. I feel like if you use such a detailed brush for a really beaming highlight, you're just gonna end up with like a stripe. Obviously you can blend it out, but in my mind, I wanna use a more subtle uh, highlight with this brush. So I pulled out my NARS highlighting powder in Fort de France. And so I just press it in to the powder and this has a round ferrule. So what I like to do is use very small kind of like buffing circular motions, again, to avoid anything like too, too strong. So when I've put on this NARS highlight with a fluffier brush, something where I can really put on a light application, I have found this highlighter to actually be, you know, more on the subtle side, you can build it up, it does get beaming, but with one quick application with this brush, I find that it is immediately beaming. So if you're trying to get like the most out of some of your more subtle highlights in your collection, this is a great brush. I'm just gonna run some down the center of my nose here. All right, so I have demoed and talked about each brush individually. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my makeup and we'll come back and do some brush comparisons. All right, I am back. So let's go ahead and start the brush comparisons. So let's start with the Face uh, Pro brush. I have that in my hand. Here I have it next to Sonia G's Sculpt One brush. So you can see that the Sculpt One brush is obviously a little bit wider, it is a fan shape. But you can also see here that the Face Pro brush is fluffier. It's gonna give you a more diffused application. I wanna say the pinch and like the diameter of the ferrule here is very, very similar. But because of how the bristles are laid in and the shapes of it, the Face Pro brush is fluffier. So here's the Face Pro brush next to the Tom Ford bronzer brush. The Tom Ford bronzer brush is just bigger all around. It's wider. It's a little bit thicker. The bristles are a little bit, a little bit longer than the Face Pro. Because of that, you would think that it would have just a completely more fluffy, diffused application. But I find the application with the Face Pro 
to be even more diffused. I think it's because it's not quite as dense as the bronzer brush. The bronzer brush is very, very dense. So even though it's very big and it's very fluffy, you get a pretty strong application with this. While the Face Pro may be a little bit more of a purposeful application, it is more diffused. And then I thought I would compare it to the Chikahoto Artist 20-10 brush. This I've been using a lot to set my face and I like it for a lot of the same reasons I like the Face Pro brush because it has a nice like sweeping action. So the shapes of these are, are different. I mean, they're very different. This one is a little bit thicker. It's a little bit narrower. The domed egg shape of this brush is different from the angle top of the Face Pro, but I do kind of use them in the same way. If I do use the Artist 20-10 brush for bronzer or whatever, I feel like I get a pretty similar application to the Face Pro brush. I just prefer the Face Pro over this because the bristles on this Artist 20-10 are not quite as soft. They're a little bit coarser, so I just prefer the Face Pro. I just like that it's angled. I like that it has more of a paddle shape and it's just something I prefer. But in terms of use, they're, interestingly enough, uh, kind of interchangeable in my head. And then I thought I would just go ahead and compare it to the Chikahoto Z1 brush because this is the my brush of choice for setting powder. This obviously is a very, very different brush. It's rounded, but I just, I don't know, I really like the paddle shape of the Face Pro brush. I find that it is helping me set my face faster. I just kind of sweep it away, where with a round brush like the Chikahoto Z1, I find myself using circular motions. It just takes a little bit longer, I find. But I still love the Chikahoto Z1 brush very, very much. The hairs on the Z1 brush are squirrel hair, so they are a little bit um, minkier soft than the goat hair brushes. I mean, to the touch, they're very, very similar, very similar, but there is just something a little bit, a slight bit silkier to the Chikahoto Z1 brush. All right, next up, I've got the Inochige brush. This is the one that comes to a nice point. And my first comparison here is with the Wayne Goss 00 brush. I just got this brush from Wayne Goss in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. I have not even got a chance to use it, but the shapes are very, very similar. The Wayne Goss hair length is a little bit longer, and I wanna say it's a little bit bigger. The diameter's maybe just a hint bigger than the Inochige Pro. The Inochige Pro Feral, it comes in a little bit, so it's going to give you more control. Uh, the bristles at the base are going to be brought in a little bit, make it a little bit more dense at the base here, where the Wayne Goss brush, it just comes straight up. So this is going to have a slightly kind of fluffier uh, application. And then the only other brush that I have in my collection that's even close to this Inochige shape is this Chanel powder brush. It doesn't come to as much of a point as the Sonia G. Uh, the bristles are synthetic, so it is fairly different, but the shapes are a little bit similar. And then just for comparison's sake, I have the Wayne Goss 02 brush because again, it has a little bit of a similar shape. It's not quite as pointy at the top, but it is much smaller. But there is a comparison if you have the Wayne Goss 02 brush. And this is an undyed goat hair and the Sonia G is dyed goat hair. All right, next up we have the Cheek Pro brush. And I was going on and on about the brushes that I felt like they were similar to, but I think a little bit of an improvement. So the first one is the Tom Ford Cheek brush. This is the 06 brush. And you can see how much bigger the Tom Ford blush brush is. In some instances, I think it's great, but when it comes to blush, I think I mentioned this during the demo, I don't really want blush all over my face. So when I use this Tom Ford brush, I feel like I have to be very, very careful. It's also very, very dense, so it picks up a lot of product. And again, with blush, I don't necessarily think you need a lot of product. So I end up using the Tom Ford brush for less saturated blushes, blushes that are hard to pick up. And with the Sonia G brush, I don't feel like I have to be that careful. It's a little bit more universal. And then the brush I was talking about in terms of the Sonia G Cheek Pro brush being kind of like a combo of the Tom Ford brush uh, was this brush, which is the Suku Cheek Brush. And this is in squirrel hair, so it's very light. You can see that it's a little bit more of a daintier brush 
The bristles are longer. It's a little bit more narrow at the top. It doesn't quite like balloon out quite as much. So this will give you a much softer application, a much more precise application. So as much as I like the Suku cheek brush, I just always felt like I needed something with a little bit more oomph. And that's what the Sonia G Cheek Pro brush gives me. So I find the Cheek Pro brush to be a nice uh, in between the Suku and the Tom Ford. And then here it is next to the Chikahoto Cheek Brush. This is the Z6, I believe. And these are very different brushes. The Chikahoto has much longer bristles. I don't feel like this is a brush that I could buff at all. This is definitely a brush that I would use in sweeping motions. So I find the Sonia G Cheek Pro brush to be a little bit more versatile than the Chikahoto Cheek brush. And then last but not least here it is next to the Wayne Goss number 12 brush. The Wayne Goss number 12 brush is, uh, I find it to be denser. It also doesn't um, balloon out quite as much at the top. It tapers in a little bit. So you get a kind of stronger application with the Wayne Goss number 12 brush. So again, I prefer the Sonia G Cheek Pro brush to this Wayne Goss number 12 brush. And then next I've got the Detail Pro brush and I'm just gonna compare it with some of the larger eyeshadow brushes that I have. These are brushes that I kind of end up using for more purposes than just my eyes. So I thought I would go ahead and compare them. So the first one is against this Chikahoto T6 brush and this is meant to be an eyeshadow brush but it is fairly large and it's actually bigger than this Detail Pro brush. The ferrule is much wider. And this brush comes to a point versus the Detail Pro. The Detail Pro I feel like is a little bit more domed at the top. And then next is a brush that I feel like is shaped completely differently, but I would kind of use them for similar applications. This is the Surratt Large Smoky Eye Brush. The point of this is more like candle shaped. It's much pointier at the top versus the detail pro that is obvious and the Surratt is uh, squirrel hair so it is uh, minkier again it's uh, a little bit softer than the detail pro so I like to use this Surratt brush for like setting my under eyes sometimes to apply highlighter sort of the same idea as the detail pro brush so I kind of feel like I think of them in the same way but the Surratt brush is going to have a much lighter application than the Detail Pro. And then last but not least, I just wanted to compare the Fan Pro with the Sonia G Sculpt 3 brush from her uh, non-pro line. So there's a difference in the handles and the shape of the fan brushes are identical. It's just the bristles that are different. And then one last fan brush comparison. This is the Wayne Goss number 15 brush. And I think in the past I have gone on and on about how I don't like fan brushes, but when Sonia G came out with hers, these were the first ones that I really liked. And here's a good example as to why the Wayne Goss fan brush, the bristles are much longer. So you are gonna get a really, really light application with the Wayne Goss brush, but I feel like it's so light and it's so wispy that I never felt like I was actually like putting product in and I really like buffing product into my skin. And I never felt that a typical fan brush like this Wayne Goss one was very effective in that way. It's also why I never thought to use a brush like this with cream products. I just feel like because of the wispiness of these uh, brushes that the cream product would be just a little bit too much for these brushes to handle. But because the Sonia G fan brushes are shorter, there's a lot more control, a lot more firmness with these brushes. And so I just think that they handle buffing and they handle cream products a lot better. So that is it for all the brush comparisons that I have for you. Uh, we talked about uh, each brush and I gave you a demo for each one. So let me know if you have any uh, questions down below in the comment section. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.